Good morning, good morning. Welcome to day seven of my parenting challenge. Uh, today we are still in part two, where we are continuing to explore the parenting practices that align with our values and our goals as a parent. Um, but it also is helping build our connections. It's really this foundation that's going to be critical. Now I find a lot of parents have a hard time with some of the challenges that I have in this second part, uh, just because, well, especially with the nagging, when we're biting our tongue, because parents feel like they're getting, letting their kids get away with stuff. And so I find that this part of the challenge is really hard for parents just to get over that. But we got to remember in the back of our mind, our focus is on building that foundation. Our focus is on building that relationship. Because without that relationship, I mean, I could have started day one, starting right away with disciplinary um, practices and consequences and how, how to manage this behavior or that behavior. But if we don't have this solid relationship with our kids, it doesn't matter how effective our uh, parenting practices are. And so that's why if you bear with me through the second part of the challenge where we're building our relations, building our connections with our kids, then guess what? The rest becomes easier. You probably don't even need to implement a behavior plan, right? You, you probably won't even need necessarily big consequences or anything like that. And so that's why I'm taking the time to focus on the connection. The behaviors will come. We'll get to that. But without this, like I said, you know, th there's no point. So essentially what we're doing right now is we're, we're pushing that reset button. If you already have a strong relationship with your kids, I know that you do. We're just strengthening it a little bit. Right? So just remind yourself that's what we're working on is the relationship. We're going to build responsibility and accountability as we go for sure, but this is the piece. So today I want to talk about the number one most important thing that we need to do as parents. Listening. Listening is important because we can better accurately understand what's actually going on for our kids. We think we know, but research shows what we think we know is going on for our kids and what actually is going on for our kids is usually two very different things. We need to know what's going on for them, but we also under need to understand their thoughts, their feelings, especially during a conflict situation, um, and, and kind of what their worldview is, what their perspective is, to be able to find peaceful solutions. So I know you likely already listen to your kids, but it's not just about you listening to them. The key piece here is that they are feeling like you are actually listening. They feel like you've actually heard them, and they feel like you've actually you've actually understood them because oftentimes they don't feel that way. Many of the kids that I work with think that their parents are master naggers, but not very good listeners. They feel like they're always being interrogated and not listened to. And a big problem we have as, as, as parents is that um, we get our big butts in the way. And that's usually how I say it. Our big butts are in the way. Our kids will say something and then we'll immediately interject with a yeah, but. You know, we, we need to teach them our perspective of what's going on, right? Or we might ask too many questions. Parents always want to know why, 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 why? Why? But there's a couple of things here. I mean, first of all, if we ask why, it's very blamey. And so kids are automatically going to get their backs up and they're going to tune out, right? And they're not going to engage in the conversation. It, the, the why triggers our emotional brain. The other thing is, I've already mentioned, kids don't process or think about things the same way we do. And so when we're asking why, they can't really... Un they can't process that to give you a good answer. And so we're just frustrating everybody. We're frustrating them and we're frustrating you. And from a very young age, age kids will come to us with problems, you know, and they might say things like, nobody likes my feelings. You're telling me how I'm wrong and that how I feel is wrong and you're shutting me down. You're not listening. And so even though we're trying to tell them how much we love them, we're actually doing the very opposite. And over time, kids believe that we don't want to hear about how they're feeling, that we're just going to... Um, oh, I lost connection. Hopefully I'm back. Um, let me know if I am back. That would be helpful. So over time, like I said, kids, kids don't think that we don't want to hear their feelings or that we're just going to minimize them, that they're not a big deal, or we're going to try to jump in, we're going to try to fix things, you know, or we're going to ask a bunch of questions or we're just going to talk and talk and talk and talk when all they need is a shoulder to cry on, just someone to listen. And by the time they're teens, many, many teens complain that 
adults just don't understand. I mean, there's songs written about it. Teens feel very isolated, especially from their parents, and they seek solace wherever they can. And that's why I talked yesterday about how we have this peer-oriented society. It's because teens are turning away from their parents because they don't understand. And so they turn to where they can commiserate with others right about their teacher or their parents or whatever's going on with their lives and that's peers and that's social media and think of your teen years you know did you did you feel you, you were supported by your parents you're lucky if you were but if not you probably understand what i'm talking about and if your teens your child's a teen already start to listen now it's never too late right it's just making sure that they feel really truly feel heard no other parenting strategy is going to be as effective um, if you don't, you know, have your kids feeling understood. Um, and, you know, we want to start practicing now. So that's going to be our challenge, practicing listening effectively, because when you really need it, that's when it's going to become really important. So you want to understand enough to get your child's perspective. I'm going to get into how to listen effectively a little bit more and validating your kids. But right now it's just listening to the words that they say, but as well as their body language and giving them that space. It helps to connect with you, but when we give them that space, it, it also helps them process the situation. It also helps them process their emotions. So that's really important. It's not just about our connection. It's also those types of things. Um, and, and in my clinical work, I mean, the most powerful moments in my office have been when parents have given their kids the space to listen, right? And, and what they want to say, that's usually where our best work has come. So for today, I just want you to practice listening to your kids. Focus on being there, creating that space, no yeah buts or trying to fix things just simply reflecting back what you hear just trying to understand if you have to ask a couple questions just to make sure you've got what they are thinking and what they are saying as fully as you can I do have some prompts in today's worksheets that you can say to show that you're listening um, but if all you did was listen you don't even need to talk without saying a word that could make all the difference in the world just see what happens you know be very curious be very genuine allow whatever to come up unfold whatever it is no matter how absurd it is or insane even if they're saying you know you don't love me oh kiddo right we're not agreeing we're not going to say you know I, yeah you're right i don't love you it's just creating that space where we can be there and they and it's that shoulder to cry on um, if you can, we're going to use this. I also want you to record a few exchanges with your kids that you have throughout the day, whether it's when you're actually practicing listening or just, just through your day. Um, so my child said this, I said this. My child said this, I said this. If you can do that a few times, we are actually going to use that later on to analyze your communication pattern and see how effective it is and see if we can do some tweaking. So for today, go and listen to your kids, practice listening as much as you can, and have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.